D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. We are witnesses today to an emerging cultural tragedy. 80 to 95% of children uh, with gender dysphoria, if they are not administered puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones, that they do eventually become comfortable with their bodies after puberty. Gender confusion endangers freedom and destroys lives. Find out how and what you can do to protect your children on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. You might find yourself disoriented living in modern America. Just a short while ago, those on the left, like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, professed to believe in biblical traditional marriage. Fast forward a dozen years, and not only is same-sex marriage legal in all 50 states by decree of the Supreme Court, but now you can switch from being male to female just by deciding that's how you feel inside. Or you may decide that you are non-binary and don't fit into either of those categories. Facebook once famously listed 57 different genders to choose from. But some felt that was still too confining, so now they simply let you fill in the blank with your own gender label. This would be almost comical if there weren't real-life tragedies involved. In today's America, there are even those who want to be able to give your child hormones and genital mutilation surgery without your permission. And some of these hold the reins of power in Washington. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb has more. As a teenager, Kira Bell wanted to become a boy. Now she sees the transition she underwent as a temporary and superficial fix for a complex identity issue. There's a growing phenomenon of young people who are dealing with gender confusion. When I first arrived at the, at the clinic, you know, my belief, you know, that I was a boy or, you know, that I should become a boy was affirmed. Um, you know, there was no investigation into why I had those feelings. There is such a thing as gender dysphoria. It is, uh, thankfully, or used to be, very rare. Um, and it is a, the situation, it's a mental condition where children are ex extremely distressed about their biological sex. Um, so very... Um, it causes psychological distress. Uh, but the important thing to remember about gender dysphoria is, according to the American Psychological Association, not a particular friend of ours, but nevertheless, the leader in this area, um, up to 88% of girls and up to 98% of boys who experience sex confusion will grow out of it naturally when they pass through puberty. So it's a, uh, a painful but temporary condition for up to 98% of children who experience it. All people have dignity and should be treated with respect, including those who identify as transgender. Um, and particularly with children, we should be very careful in the way that we treat gender dysphoria. 80 to 95% of children uh, with gender dysphoria, if they are not administered puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones, that they do eventually become comfortable with their bodies after puberty. The Bible says that God has made us in His image, male and female He has made us. But the transgender movement seeks to blur those God-given boundaries, and it has made incredible inroads in our society today, even in national politics. My youngest daughter is transgender. The Trump administration has attacked the rights of transgender people. I promise you, there is no reason to suggest that there should be any right denied your daughter. Is it showing compassion to be uh, advertising or going along with your child because they want to have uh, puberty blockers? You know, is it really passion to sterilize 
the young people that we're sterilizing with this movement? Is it showing compassion when we look at uh, the cancers, we look at the dangers, uh, bone density uh, changes in somebody, all of this for their health, is it really compassion to be able to go along with this type of chaos? And where does it end? Many of the results of puberty blockers and gender reassignment surgery are permanent. For example, many girls who undergo such treatment become permanently sterile. Tragically, the transgender agenda is making tremendous inroads into our schools. The teachers associations, the teachers unions, they have become so politicized and they are pushing an agenda that's designed to corrupt our children. Even in kindergarten, uh, they're teaching them about sex education and that body parts feel good when they're touched. And they are grooming our children and so that's just the sex part. And you can think about how dangerous it is uh, for children in that some of the teaching that is being put before our young children is about transgenderism. Little boys are being told that maybe they were born in the wrong body, uh, little girls, and they are being given the idea that you get to choose your sex. In some cases, school authorities are using the transgender agenda to trump the rights of the parents. Parents who should be a vital part, a partnership with, with educators and educating kids, parents who really have the primary role in educating their children are being really seen as the enemy. Schools don't want us to know what's going on. They don't make it easy to find out what's going on in sex ed classes. They don't make it easy for parents to opt their kids out of sex ed class and some of these lessons are being taken out of the sex ed curriculum and put in other places where there's not an obvious parental opt-out. We've started to see some cases begin to perk where in the context of transgenderism, um, if you have a minor who is told by the psychologist at the school or other uh, adult in the government system that uh, maybe they should transgender and the parents are like, sorry, that's not going to happen. We've got X and Y chromosomes here. We've got ex external genitalia. We know the answer to this question, right? Um, and so they're beginning to determine that the parents are unfit, that we have to remove the child for you. And those are things that ought to really be very scary for the average um, faith community and average mom and dad. The transgender movement may sound like it's compassionate, but critics note that in addition to potentially subjecting children to irreversible damage, this is a movement that squelches free speech and religious liberty. The radical left and the extreme LGBTQ movement is on the, on the prowl to silence anyone opposed to their perspective, including individuals in their own private time, in their own private website, with regard to their private speech. For example, the Grants Pass School District in Oregon, uh, they decided to put on leave two teachers who in their, on their own time, and their, on their own private website, without even identifying themselves as a teacher, much less where they're teaching, expressed their concerns about policies that would allow teenage boys to go into girls' locker rooms and visually violate girls because of their alleged gender identity dysphoria. Now, make no mistake, uh, we, we need to have compassion, understanding uh, for people who have gender identity dysphoria. But that doesn't mean we should allow the, the fundamental rights of privacy and decency to be violated on a regular daily basis uh, by girls in locker rooms, showering and changing in front of this, this young man. We ought to be able to speak the truth, speak it in love, but speak the truth and not be punished by our own government. It's a world of the emperor's new clothes where everybody was afraid to tell the king he wasn't wearing anything except one little boy who spoke the truth. We're gonna to have to have more of those little boys that we're all gonna be wearing muzzles someday, afraid to speak the truth. We should be especially cautious with children to give them a chance to mature and to become comfortable with their bodies. We should not be administering off-label drugs to children that could not only um, have side effects like hurting their bone density, increasing their risk of heart disease, but could even lead to sterilization. Um, 
there are the side effects on children, but then there's also the growing number of desisters or detransitioners, people who pursued the path of sex reassignment, took, in some cases they took hormones, in some cases they even had reassignment surgeries, but then they later came to regret trying to do that. And what is the end game of all this gender confusion? I think for the left, the end game is to impose gender identity ideology on the entire country. I think you see that with the Democratic presidents who recently supported that in the Democratic debates. I think they will do very drastic things to impose their beliefs that a man can become a woman on the entire country. I think that in about five to ten years, there will be a lot of malpractice lawsuits that are, that are starting up from all of these children who are being pushed through these gender uh, therapy clinics where they're having uh, psychological uh, you know, treatment being given to them that's, that's screwing them up. And then also the hormone treatments. Um, they're injecting them with uh, puberty blockers. They're injecting them with uh, testosterone. They're having, giving them estrogen. And these are little kids who can't even consent to sexual activity or to get tattoos or to have medicine. But we're letting them consent to sex changes, essentially. And there's going to be a lot of malpractice lawsuits. All of this confusion is the result of walking away from truth. Instead of objective revealed truth, our cultural elites now encourage each of us to construct our own truth with nothing higher than our own inward desires to guide us. Objectively, this has been a recipe for disaster as the grim data on abortion and the deaths of despair seen in rising suicides and overdoses amply demonstrates. It's not unlike the lament that ends the book of Judges. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Dr. D. James Kennedy exposes the underlying problem and offers us the God-ordained solution in this portion of his message, The Biblical View of Sex. Unless one has been residing on the moon for the past four decades, he knows that we have been through a revolution in this nation and in our world during that time. It, of course, is called the sexual revolution. But against whom has this revolution been directed? Well, the answer, very simply, is that it has been directed against God. Not uh, too long ago, there was a talk show, and a number of noted people were discussing this, and uh, one woman asked the question, well, well, aren't there any morals today? And somebody else answered quickly, no. And that was the end of that bit of discussion. Nobody challenged it. Nobody said, how do you know? No one questioned it at all. The rule and reign and law of God had been summarily rejected without discussion or question. Somebody described it this way, sexual anarchy is here. It has assumed extreme forms and spread throughout a large part of the population, side by side with an increase of sexual perversions, a shameless sexual promiscuity also greatly has increased. The, they seduce members of the same family. Relations between father and daughter, son and mother are not unknown. In fact, contemporary authors rejoice in relationships with two sisters or a mother and a daughter. Adultery, rape, and prostitution have greatly increased. Homosexual love has entered the mores of the population. 
and contemporary authors seemed sadistically to enjoy the enumeration of a variety of turpitudes and sexual perversions. They describe all of the aberrations of morbid eroticism with the impudence of a casuist. Well, that's the new world. Not exactly. That was not a contemporary author. He was writing and living 4,500 years ago in the old kingdom of Egypt. 4,500 years ago, in the year 2500 BC. What? You mean this is not new? This is not modern? This is not scientific? No, it's as old as sin. It all began with the lie of the devil. Ye shall not die, but your mind will be expanded. It will be psychedelic, which means mind expanding, and you will know good from evil. Well, the tragedy of that lie is one thing we don't know today, is that we don't know good from evil. But the Bible says neither adulterers, nor fornicators, nor homosexuals have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. May I say that again? That is not something that originated with me. But the word of God declares that neither adulterers, nor fornicators, nor homosexuals, and several other things, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. You see, the Bible is very clear. It says that all of those that hate me, and we demonstrate that by our rebellion and our rejection of his rule over us, all of those that hate me love, love death. God is the living God. He is the God of life. He is the giver of life. He is the one that promises to those that trust in him life everlasting, life abundant. He is the God of life. And whenever we reject his commandments, whichever they be, we inevitably bring upon ourselves death. No, it's a very serious matter. And the God who loves us doesn't want us to be destroyed. We have believed the lies of Satan rather than the truth of God. But there is hope. One of the tragic things about sin is that all sin is addictive. It doesn't have to be merely alcohol or drugs. It doesn't matter what kind of sin you get into. It is addictive, and the more you do it, the stronger becomes the addiction, and the more the chains hold you, and the greater desire for that sin. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, because you know that you are in bondage right now. The good news is shackles are broken at Calvary. There on the cross, Christ, having been affixed hand and foot for us, broke the chains that bind the captive to sin. And he can set you free. You can go to that fountain which has been opened at Calvary's Mount, and you can be washed and cleansed. You can be clothed in the perfect righteousness of his white robes of purity, and become whiter than snow. You can be infilled with the power of the Holy Spirit and delivered from the bondage and addiction of sin. 
There and only there is there hope for a sinful world. I invite you in his name to come to the cross, to find forgiveness, to find a new life, to find purity, which I know that some of you desire and would be, give anything to be set free. Come and find the truth and the love of Christ and the life abundant and everlasting. As Dr. Kennedy just shared, the love of Christ is ultimately the answer to all our sin, confusion, and brokenness. But in our confused culture, that message is often drowned out by the incessant propaganda of movies, commercials, pop music, and social media. It's not unlikely that some of you have despaired about raising children or grandchildren in this beyond the looking glass world where even basic truths about what constitutes male and female are relentlessly attacked. Well, we have a vital resource to share with you, one that is as powerful as it is essential. It's the compact book, Anchoring Your Child to God's Truth in a Gender-Confused Culture by Dr. Gary Yagel, a specialist in men's ministry and family issues. He has written a much needed hands-on guide to help your children embrace their proper calling to godly womanhood or manhood. This may be the best practical resource I have seen for helping your children and grandchildren on these contentious issues because it peels away the distortions of the culture and imparts biblical truth and wisdom. Our confused culture puts self at the center of everything, but a biblical worldview puts God at the center. The book, Anchoring Your Child to God's Truth in a Gender-Confused Culture, will help you root your children in the truth, putting a biblical lens over the blurry picture of sex and gender that they receive from the culture. We will send you this important book as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. And if you are able to give a special ministry gift of $50 or more, we will send you this high-impact book plus the brand new DVD special we're producing entitled The Tragedy of Gender Confusion. The new maze of gender identity is confusing to navigate largely because it's contrary to reason and revealed truth. But on this special program, you will discover vile cultural Marxism that lurks behind the new gender confusion and the serious harm inflicted on children and women. You will see how the politically correct gender police seek to enforce obedience. And you will meet someone who transitioned to another gender and now greatly regrets it after a life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ. You will want a copy of this powerful and essential DVD program. And it's now in final production, so we'll send it to you as soon as it's ready. That's the must-have book, Anchoring Your Child in a Gender-Confused Culture, as our thanks for your generous donation, and the book plus the brand new DVD special, The Tragedy of Gender Confusion, as our gratitude for your ministry support of $50 or more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. We live in a culture 
in which the whims and imagined imperatives of the internal self have eclipsed the objective external reality. It doesn't matter whether your body or genes are physically male or female, all that matters now is how you feel about it internally. And the world around you must enable that confusion by changing pronouns and opening locker room doors to accommodate your inward self. Of course, no society can long survive such anti-scientific notions that stand at variance to objective reality. The question for those whose faith in Christ is based upon objective truth claims is, how then shall we live in such a culture? The late Christian dissident Alexander Solzhenitsyn once issued a powerful indictment of the totalitarian Soviet Union entitled, Live Not By Lies. In it, he declared, let each man choose. Will he remain a witting servant of the lies? Or has the time come for him to stand straight as an honest man worthy of the respect of his children and contemporaries? Solzhenitsyn went on to say that the honest man from this day onward will not write, sign, nor publish in any way a single line distorting so far as he can see the truth, will not utter such a line in private or public conversation, nor read it from a crib sheet, nor speak it in the role of educator, canvasser, teacher, actor. The recent case of a courageous teacher in Virginia is instructive. The Loudoun County School Board proposed a policy to require that all transgender students be addressed using their chosen gender and personal pronouns rather than their biological sex. Elementary school teacher Tanner Cross told the school board, quote, I serve God first and I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa because it's against my religion, it's lying to a child, it's abuse to a child, and it's sinning against our God. The school board immediately suspended him, but helped by the Alliance Defending Freedom, Cross took the board to court, and now a circuit court judge has overruled the district and reinstated him, noting that the suspension was an obvious violation of his First Amendment rights. This brave teacher is determined to not live by lies. May you and I have the courage to join him with God's help. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for being with us. Here's a look at the next truths that transform. Here I am, the Lord's using me to bring the word out and try to help other people prevent them from suicide or an unnecessary gender reassignment surgery. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.